the Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. And on tonight's episode of Real Talk Christian, we're asking the question, are tattoos a sin? Hey, Fuller, you ready to find out if that stuff on your arm's a sin or not? Let's get tatted. Let go. Fuller, what's up, my dude? What's up, man? What was that? I was just trying to soche on for size. <laughs> dude, okay, if we have new listeners, they have no idea what you just said. Yeah. So they have literally no clue. I'm trying to remember what was the episode he did that on in season one. It was... Well, that, that was like the first one he was with us, right? Yeah, it or was. It wasn't, a, wasn't the bu- music one? Worship? Something. Well, we had two it was like, with it was like number, Soche. It was like number seven, I And think? since then, he started his own podcast and won't come Abba, on our podcast Abba anymore. Father, yeah. So shame. goodness, him and his buddies Matthew and Cameron, Abba Father podcast, where they Abba. talk about a theological perspective on what does it mean to be a dad. So it's kind yeah. of a kind of an interesting idea, an interesting conversation. So if you're a dad, you should check them out. And if you're a dude and a dad, you should check out dudes and dads. Our buddies over at Dudes and Dads, Andy Lehman and Joel Demott. I just found out Joel Demott's a youth group or a youth pastor coach. Oh, I knew that. I had no clue. Like he works with like, a company called Youth Cartel, which I have like tons of their resources. So had had tons. Of my their resources. favorite part about Joel Demont is his fake Michigan history. I feel like we talked about that we last did. episode. We did, but he just came up with the new episode. Today. Did he really today or yesterday? It's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. His fake Michigan news, exactly. where he just makes up a load of crap wherever right. he's at on vacation yep. or whatever. Yes, I absolutely is. love it, man. Well, hey, so I did something different to cue off this podcast. You did. Man. You did. So, so let's get actually, to it. I just realized I never posted those posts to Instagram, so I'll post those in between the episodes. Um, but I feel so, so We did all that right for now. nothing? We did all that. For, no, it'll, it'll, it'll post. Yeah, late. Late. But hey, we, are we going to try to keep this under... Uh, under 50 minutes today? Ten, yeah, that's not going to We better happen. roll. So, but on Instagram, right before we started podcasting, I, I dropped a little sticker is what you can call them. We call them question stickers. Stickers. And I said, we're podcasting tonight. Is there anything random that you would like to know about Mark and Full? Oh, oh I misspelled your name, bro. I said F-U-L-L-W-E-R. Full were. Full were. You know about Mark F- and Full were? Full were. Full were. Uh, drop it here. And someone asked the question, Chick-fil-A nuggets or sandwich? So- Fuller, what would, what's your jam at Chick Fil A, bro? So who was that from? Who this that? is from uh, a now he's a senior over at Mishawaka High School, Elijah Hamilton. Elijah, we should probably record this so we can send it back. But right, Elijah, right. Elijah Hamilton. I think you're asking the wrong questions. It's not nuggets or chicken sandwich. It's what Uh-oh. sauce do you do with it? Oh, so you don't really that's care the, about the that's method the more, of chicken. That's the more important question. Okay. Which sauce do you use? Okay. Because it's the same chicken. It's just different but sizes. But it's not, though. The strips are different. They use a different breading. It tastes the same. Come on. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. No. Who here is a chicken snob? Who's the fat kid? Who, who's, the, who's the fat kid? <laughs> right here. Not me. So, uh, yes, I would probably say I, I would prefer, if I had to choose out of the two, because I'm going to answer this question anyways. Yeah, answer it. Uh, probably nuggets just for the dipping purposes. Really? See, just, just for the, only for the dipping purposes. If I'm getting nuggets or strip, it's because I got a mac and cheese bowl. I want to put my, my I want to dice up my chicken and put those in the mac and cheese bowl because that's so good. The mac and cheese from Chick Fil A with the chicken inside of it. What the heck is wrong is with you? Fresh. It is fresh, fresh, fresh. But I'm a sandwich guy, and you smother it with Chick Fil A sauce and extra pickle. No, all bro, day. Honey long. mustard. See, that's where Chick Fil A sauce is like honey mustard. Or, took, it's like honey mustard or, that went to the gym. Or you, or take, it's like honey mustard. I got personality. Or you take, oh, oh, you take ranch. Okay, okay, and mix it with the buffalo sauce. Yo, that stuff's what's up. Okay, that's, that's where a it's hit. At. All right, that's a hit. That hits different. That's where it's at. That hits different. But so Alice was wondering, chicken Chick Fil A sandwich or Chick Fil A nuggets? Your nuggies. I'm, I'm nug- sandwich. You're Sandy. And if you want, I'm Sandy. That's my aunt. I'm, if I'm you want to see a really fun, <laughs> if that's, you want to see that's a my daughter. funny <laughs> video. 
John Chris dropped, which John Chris is back, by the way. I'm glad he got, he checked his heart and got his heart right. Yeah. If you don't know what that means, I apologize. But uh, he dropped a video like a year or two ago. What's better, Chick-fil-A nuggets or strips? And he went to like what weighs more and how much extra, like, like it's just, it's funny. Of He scientifically proved too much time. That it was, and hands. his big answer was, is if you eat Chick-fil-A chicken nuggies, you're under the age of six because you're a freaking kid. No. That's your answer. You're a no. kid if you eat chicken nuggies. No. Bro, man, eat the strips. That's what he says. No, so. you're an old fogey who might choke if you accidentally swallow a whole piece. That's where the sandwich comes in because it keeps you from putting the whole thing in your mouth. That's true. That is true. But I've been, I, I love the sandwich. I'm just saying. And the spicy sandwich and the grilled club. Those are, I, I, I've been rocking the grilled club yeah. lately. I, don't, I, haven't really been, I haven't really been going to Chick-fil-A lately. You know what's so sad to think about is there's people who listen to this podcast and I and I don't know, know what Chick Fil A is. They don't know what Chick Fil A is, or they know what it is. Well, they've heard of its heavenly goodness. I was gonna say they, gonna, they've seen it. They're but gonna they haven't f- tasted it. They're gonna find out second coming of Christ. I mean, because obviously that's it's gonna be the, at the feet, the, the wedding the, feast, wedding feast, <laughs> of the lamb is gonna be that right next to Kane's chicken. Kane's chicken is uh, gonna be there too. Well, maybe, but you I know think so? I know Chipotle will be there. You think Chipotle is gonna be Chipotle there? Chipotle is life. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, wasn't that like an old vibe? It is, yeah. That's dude. what I said. Chipotle, Chipotle is my life. life. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, dude. I, we got to find that video. Oh, that one's that a great one. one was absolutely solid. Dude. Anyways, uh, but yeah, the coffee we're drinking. Let's jump into we're that. We're drinking something different tonight, we're, my dude. We're drinking something from, and I know Andy Lehman, if he's listening, he will know. He'll be like, oh, He's yeah. one of the hosts from Dudes and Dads. Which, he, if you listen to our episode, you can click the link in our he, Instagram bio and right. go listen to it. Right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but we are drinking the refinery tonight. They're mm-hmm. Brazilian. What was it again? It was blue something Brazilian. Uh, Brazilian blue, blue mountain. Blue blue notes or blue, blue mountain. Something? Yeah, something like it's that. It's better than what it smells. I like. It tastes better it than what it smells like. It still tastes very chemically to me. I feel you. I mean, we're. It tastes like there's like it's down there cu- cumin or something like that. In yeah. It. Well, it smells like cumin or some sort of like. Some sort of spice, some yeah. sort of baking spice, but it's not like cinnamon, like baking spice. Nutmeg, maybe, bears, maybe a little, beets, I think Battlestar Galactica. Only those who watch The Office will understand. Nope, I don't. That's I don't. But I think there's also we're some just gonna nutmeg go ahead and take the camera too, off of you, and you're just done for the day. All <laughs> right. So what we're gonna talk but about? But we're also here having is, some uh, Irish cream. You know. Um, uh, oh my goodness! No, no I, creamer. We have some Irish cream. No, I Irish. Had some, I, I oh, sweet you cream. did the Italian sweet cream. Oh, I did the the Irish cream cream. And it actually made this different. very light and fluffy. It's good. Made it fluffy. I'm actually impressed with it. I'm actually. Pr- I like the refinery. They're making me crazy. My favorite. They're making me crazy. Don't, the, the but chemical taste. I uh, I do need to apologize because I'm not using an RTC mug. He's For using a stolen it, mug. I'm. Old school Northland Baptist Bible College before it was Northland International University before it doesn't exist. So that's where I went to school. So this was part of my office decor that when I left Northland, I'm like, well, I gave enough of my time for this. I'm taking this with me. So I took this mug. You stole it. And I took another mug. And I took a lot of pens. So we need to take a vote here. Oh, no. And the vote is, should Mark make, uh, what, what is it called? Restitution, restitution for his penance? crime, his penance. Should he pay penance for his theft of a Bible coffee mug? <laughs> Bible college. If it makes you feel any better, it's hey, originally a fundy hey, school. What's on the back there? Uh, it says, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me. Hath. Hey, Here's some King Jimmy hey, for you. Hey, wait. Is enabled it, me for, and kind of me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Is it? Is it a scripture? It is the Bible. Then it's the Bible mug. <laughs> he stole I stole a, a Bible, Bible mug. mug from a Bible college. Speaking of which, hey, Coffee but Mug Christianity. There you go. There you go. Coffee Mug Christianity <laughs> right there. For all of the, those of you who have not done your devotion today, there was your devotion. There's your devotion. Anyways. And so before we jump into the actual conversation. We have a review. Because, yeah, apparently we we forgot to read it and we got called out for we it. We flubbed. We flubbed. But this is from episode 39. Best Schneider of the Schneider Ladies. Schneider. SchneiderLadies.com, I think, is. <laughs> The uh, she wrote back in June sixteenth, so it's it's been a while. So it's, yeah, I apologize. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> whoops. Um, I really could have sworn we read this one. I but, feel like, but we she did. says we haven't, so we're gonna read it again. Yeah. Um, and on top of it, we uh, Engineer- we've had to start and stop so many episodes. So we probably read it once and was like, oh, let's try it again. Probably. So. Anyways, Which this video is kind of lagging, so I'm nervous. But it says, I really enjoy the perspectives that yep, Mark and like, Fuller bring to eat. I love when they say Mark and Fuller. You know they listen when they say Fuller. It's not just Mark and Chris. I absolutely love it. Well, I would hope they listen if they were a guest. They've had to at least listen once. Probably. So, um, I really enjoy the perspectives that Mark and Fuller bring to each episode, whether they both agree or disagree on the topic. Their honest conversations about real stuff is refreshing to hear 
Highly recommend this podcast for Christians seeking to hear the truth in love. There's your little like tag too, bro. That just means that in the disagreements, they think I'm right. <laughs> just kidding. Wait a minute. I'm kidding. But Neil say, if you want to help us out and get this podcast into the ears of listeners, I know so many of you guys listen on Spotify. You can't leave a review on Spotify, but if you could do us a favor, I'm sure pretty much everybody has an Apple ID because they have an iPhone or something. Just go to the URL or just Google search Real Talk Christian Pod or go to the new website. Ooh. Go to the new website, realtalkchristianpodcast.com. Click listen on Apple Podcasts. And even if you don't use Apple Podcasts, just leave a review. Just just, just help my brother out. Brothers, because we're... Help the listeners. Help the listeners find some good, good content. Listen, let, but us, let us be your neighbor. Let us be <laughs> let us be your neighbor <laughs> while we talk about tattoos. You know, Mr. Rogers had a tattoo. He did. That's why he wore a That's cardigan. That's why he wore cardigans. Right? right. So the question, so that answers the question of are tattoos a sin? The answer is no, because Mr. He Rogers said, had one. He said, no, because I was in the Navy and I got a tattoo. And now I just want everybody to be my neighbors. Even Bob Ross is my neighbor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and that's that legit man. right there. <laughs> and Bob Ross has got to have some tattoos. I love Mr. Rogers. I actually still watch it with my kids. To, Do to you really? Day. Oh, dude, I, I love, I love Daniel Rogers. Tiger. I enjoy me some We Daniel watch Tiger. that too. Lots of Daniel Tiger. We watch a lot of dinosaur things. But either way, Anyways. we're asking the question, are tattoos a sin? And if you've been a part of the Christian world for forever, maybe grew up in a Christian home, this is a rhetoric that we heard all the time growing up, that tattoos are <laughs> sinful or God doesn't like tattoos or good christians don't yeah, have tattoos. i've never heard of it i don't know what you're talking about is there something on your arm there boss what oh what <laughs> you showing off your guns no i'm showing off my <laughs> farmer's tan <laughs> goodness but you know growing up in this conversation especially yeah. growing up in conservative christianity oh, like definitely. i did we always heard that oh uh, it was us before now it's just how you grew up Exactly. I'm talking about me because you grew up a little differently than I did, but you grew up conservative Christianity yep, too. Yep, I'm just messing So we grew up being told that tattoos were evil and they're sinful and the world does that. And why would you want to be like the world? So tattoos are obviously a sin. And it seems like as millennials have gotten older, millennials have pushed that conversation into the forefront mm -hmm. of our tat. Does, does mm -hmm. the Bible really say this? Mm -hmm. Like, does, does it really? And I think this is one of those conversations where, um, there's still the the old guard. Is it old guard or old garb? Like in the church, I don't know. Sure, if it's a guard or a garb. It's a good question. I've heard it both yeah, ways. So. so 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 you have the older generation in the church who still believe it. The younger people who the, don't. You have the saints and you have the the senior sem, saints, the, the semi saints, the semi saints. But I feel like this conversation <laughs> is still kind of happening. Yeah, so, you it know, is. one thing I want to talk about is a, are they sinful tonight? And then B, if you believe they're sinful, how you should respond to those with tattoos. And mm. if you think it's a freedom in Christ you have, how do you respond to those who believe it's a sin? So I think this is going to be a big conversation, mm. but just to get started with it though, I brought a stat in. I haven't brought a stat in, in a long time, it's boss. It's been a while. We used to bring stats in all the time. Like every episode. Every episode. So let's, let's hear the stat. So in 2019, I mean, obviously this is adults surveyed it says that 21 percent of adults have tattoos so 21 percent, just over at one out of every five adult has tattoos and that's adults from 18 all the way till dead so i'm curious to hear what the percentage would be if you would say under the age of like 60 50 40 30 like, oh, i'm sure there's like with the with the I percent guarantee bro barna probably has it out there somewhere oh absolutely probably. barna has everything i mean this was off crosswalk and they yeah. got they normally get their stuff from barna as well um but yeah so 21 percent of adults have tattoos in 2019 who knows how many in 2020 i'm sure there's a lot of listeners out there who have tattoos heck our co-host has tattoos as well i have mine Scheduled. Scheduled <laughs> in, the, in the next little Podcast bit. Podcast over. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so, but I don't want this to be like the Disney episode where the Disney one, it was like... No, let's bring up both sides like, of the let's, argument. Let's talk about it. Like, I, I mean, I, yeah. obviously, I don't... Is it a sin or not? I mean, that's a question of... I think there's also a question of why. But yeah, so let's, let's go into it. I haven't gotten a tattoo in six years. Why not? Does that count for anything? Why not? Well, we're going to get into it in a little while. <laughs> oh, so you actually have a reason why you haven't gotten any recently? Yeah. Besides just you're broke and you're buying new windows for your house? Well, and books, lots of books. You've been buying books, lots of lots of lots commentaries of books. Commentaries. So either way, stuff, so but. I'm just curious, Fuller, what are some um, reasons you've been told in the past why tattoos are bad? Like, I want to actually hear, for like, what were you, you told growing you up? You don't want me to just read what you wrote down here? Well, that's what I was told growing oh, oh. up. I want to hear what well, you what were I, told what growing up. What if I just up. read off of yours, then what are you going to say? <laughs> 
<laughs> nothing. I'm going to say nothing. Uh, yeah, I haven't looked at your list, so I'm not going to. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been told uh, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and why would you uh, defile it? Defile Whatever. it, yep. To which my, the people, it cracked me up because the people that always said that always had, like, their ears pierced. It was like, huh? <laughs> yeah, you put you put bullet like, holes in your temple. Say, say what? <laughs> My, I I always heard a joke where it's like, well, the temple had artwork in it, didn't it? Like, well, oh, yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, but, yep, I heard that but, one. I've but, heard that one. But definitely heard that one a lot. Um, that tattoos came from the um, culture of rebellion. It was only the rebellious people that were Ooh, anti-culture that okay. got tattoos to begin with, and now it's become a fad. Which like, like the hippies, like no, it was bikers. Really, it started with bikers. Mm. that were like anti-establishment, anti-government, anti-church. They were the ones that started off with and the tattoos. And the gang culture just in but, general, too. But really, most of the tattoos in this country really started back in the military service. Main, I mean, that's, mainly in the Navy. Yeah, you think about a lot of military guys, even Marines, have their battalion tattooed yep. on their forearms right. or whatever. Right, it, it was a symbol of brotherhood. Oh, is that um, what that was? It was okay. Uh, the, yeah, they would have like the navy would have the anchor and different symbols like behind the flag, and marines would have like my my godfather had a uh, a, a f- American flag with an eagle over top of it as oh, his t- t- yeah, tattoo I've that seen he, a lot that of he that got one. back in the marines when he was like eighteen years old. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's the, those are the two main points that I always heard, and that uh, God would not approve mm. of defiling His holy temple. Or getting it out of a rebellious spirit. So was it called a sin for you, or was it more the fact that just oh, yeah. God frowns on this? It was a sin. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you know, my mom could say that's wrong, or mom could say I'm disappointed. And I, I can say you my very first tattoo that I got was out of rebellion. Which one was your first tattoo? My first tattoo was my Detroit Tigers symbol one. The one on your butt? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow. That was too easy. That was too easy, the boss. one on my butt. You've been hanging out with three-year-olds too much. Yeah. You talk, got a lot of poo-poo talk. <laughs> Sorry. The That's, Minnesota the Minnesota governor that, from... No, that, he was a mayor. Or, mayor, the mayor, mayor of some little He was a three-year-old mayor. Good. Four-year-old mayor. One of the whatever. greatest fun facts. No, where th- That one's on your that one's on, bicep? That one's here on my, my left shoulder-ish. So Detroit um, Tigers. That's the very first one I got, and it was out of spite of my dad. Uh, really? I wasn't following yeah. Jesus, and uh, I was at odds with my dad, and so my way of being like a little... Mm, flip, rebel. Him the, flip, flip him the bird a little bit was to go get a tattoo, which was totally wrong. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about we'll that. We'll talk about that. So, so yeah, those how old the, were you when you got that one? Were you, like I 18? was 19. 19? Eight, 19. Yeah, I was it's 19. Told, it's held up pretty good for a 19-year-old well, prison tat. I've, I'm, what prison tat? <laughs> no, I've got it re, uh, touched up. I got it oh, touched up back in 2012. Okay. So it's, I mean, even the touch-up's eight years old. So that was the first, and were you still, like, living in a dad's house and no, stuff like that, too? No, 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 okay. no, I wasn't living with my dad. Or, or either, I mean, I wasn't. Uh, well, I mean, your parents, house. just in right. general. Yeah, nope, I wasn't even talking to my dad at that time. It, uh, mm. it was like a, between then, it was like a two-year stretch that gotcha. I hadn't talked to my dad, so. And then the other ones, I know we talked about a little so, bit. So this one I got back in 2013, my shoulder my shoulder piece here. If and you're it, watching on YouTube, maybe you can see it. Yeah, if you can see it. But that's, uh, it's got my Irish heritage and some Celtic and some Indian um, drawings in there. I had a guy that uh, I said, this is what my heritage is. Just draw me something up. And he freehanded that on my arm. A buddy of mine down in Florida. And that was back in 2013 um, when I got that one. And then when I met Janelle, my wife, I got that one to prove my love for her. So it's Janelle forever. Before you guys were even Before like we engaged. Were, yeah, we weren't even right? engaged yet. So it was like, this is how much, it was my like proof. Like, I don't want to be with anybody but you so wow that was a gamble it, it was a gamble <laughs> it paid off it I mean, three off. kids and two dogs later a lot we've had two dogs two cats fish i mean we've had all sorts of stuff but yeah but three dogs we've had three dogs since we've been together. that's interesting so so the one tattoo you got was out of pure defiance just because one was, one was out of defiance one was because of heritage and one was out of love okay yeah so so let's uh, let's hear about you, man. What's, what's the reasons why you heard tattoos were bad? You know, okay, this one's actually really funny. I remember this one to a T because I was very into the basketball culture back in the day. 
Um, and, you know, this is when Allen Iverson was coming onto the scene and everyone started getting tats and this, that, and the other. And I remember for a fact my mom telling me, you ain't going to get a job. Well, she didn't sound like a fundy preacher, but she was like. The fundy voice. Independent you fundamental ain't Baptist going church. Uh, but she was like, you're not going to get a job if you have tattoos. And I'm like, so? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I remember I was like maybe 10, 11. I don't know. I thought they were cool. Um but so I actually actually heard like you will lose job opportunities for that. And especially as I went into the pastoral world, it was a guarantee, mm. which on the fl- I mean, there's a story about why I don't have one. The reason why I don't have one is because there was people in the church who viewed it actually as wrong and a sin. Right. So I was just like, you know what? For you, it's not worth it. But your boy ain't a, on staff pastor right now. So your boy's going to go get himself one. But and I have a reason. I have a good reason why. We'll talk about that later, too. Um, but so I heard you're not going to get a job because people, like, the more tattoos you have, the less likely you are to get a job. Mm. And nowadays, so every, I mean, if you have 20% of adults, and that's in all age bands, I mean, if you... That's if, a fifth. Even, that's if, a you, fifth even if you decide culture. to double and say 40% of those, you know, under the age of 50 right. have tattoos, you can't discriminate against tattoos because then you ain't going to have a job. Like, you're not going to have a workforce or anything like right. that. Well, yeah. Um, even the people that were installing my windows... They all had tattoos. Right. And I mean, there's different cultures. Like normally oh, yeah. those who worked in the restaurant business normally did. And stuff restaurant, like that. Restaurant, blue collar too. jobs, a lot of blue collar jobs. A lot of blue collar dirty jobs, like mm-hmm. the dirty jobs. Like did. me, like the jobs I work. Right. Like actually I remember someone was like, uh, you can't go into the banking banking industry. I'm like, I don't care. So. Yeah, you can. You just don't show that you, you wear long sleeves. So I thought to my mom, like, I have long sleeves. But I remember that one. Um, I remember another one was the fact of they're permanent. And why would you want to put something permanent on your body mm. if you're just going to change your mind later? And did you ever hear the one where, well, what happens uh, when you're 60 years old and it's all saggy, oh, it's all and, droopy. saggy yeah. and droopy? Well, that butterfly ain't going to be flying anymore. <laughs> I almost spit uh, took on that one. That's um, not what I heard in my childhood. I heard that. Good I heard too. that in my adult life. And I thought, I mean, it was I've heard funny. even like they'll fade, but you, I mean, you can get them touched up. I mean, I've also heard like, you know, the Bible says, and this is the probably the primary verse, so we can get into it oh, uh, besides the temple. But let's the, dive into it, though. The, the biggest verse that I've heard preached against tattoos as it comes out of Leviticus and it actually is a quote and this is coming out of the um it's either this is coming out of either the ESV or the NIV because they they say the word tattoo I got it in Um, Hebrew yeah if you want to hear it in the Hebrew that's like legit (laughs) okay I'm like no oh he's like wait wait yes you um well Leviticus 1920 says do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourself or I am the Lord 28 1928 you said 20 I said 20 I know why you did but Leviticus 1928 says do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourself for I am the Lord so what is what is the uh the word for word so this is not this is word for word but it was translated by the uh probably by the same people that did the King Jimmy stuff so it says, ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor prints, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Okay, so I, here's the question, though. So, you know, some people are like, oh, tattoos aren't in the Bible. But obviously right here, it says, in the law, it says don't do it. It says don't nor, cut yourself for and, the dead, which is, you know, talking about like what the, the priest did, even like with, with Elijah, they were right, cutting themselves and right, trying to worship. Right, and then the, nor print any marks upon you. That's, right, that's the one that's curious. Um, curious like a cat. Yeah, and I mean, even the CSB it says, "Don't make uh, gashes on your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks." And you know, this is kind of one of the questions that people have: is okay, so this is what it says. So it says, "I am the Lord." So I guess here's the question: is what do we do with that passage? And I think the easiest way to do is you have to look at it within context of what the scripture is actually trying there to say you go. and not pull it out of context. There you go. Um, and I don't want to go into the whole, like, the different types of laws, because you can talk about that, because in the same... Well, I was going to say three three verses earlier, it says, And in the fifth year ye shall eat of the fruit thereof, that if it may yield unto you the increase thereof, I am the Lord your God. What the heck? I mean, <laughs> in the fourth year... All the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord with all. Right, yeah. I I'm, mean, so I'm, I'm scrolling back to it. There's even a part where um, it's not in this part, but the same section where it talks about don't cut your hair and don't trim the size of your beard. Yeah, the the Nazarene. Like, uh, there's yeah, a that, bunch that, of other things because that's too. why you see the Jewish culture still they have like the little long curly cues off the side. The right. true, the true people that like practice Judaism. And this is talking about how that. the Israelites are supposed to live. These are their laws. Now, but it also does, so you can't just say, oh, it's a different type of law. Because, But inside this law, it also says, don't be unfair in measurements. It says, don't steal, don't oppress your neighbor or rob him. Oh, that sounds familiar for today's context. 
Um, don't ask unjustly when deciding the case. Don't harbor. Mm-hmm. Um, keep my statues. Um, if a man has sexual intercourse with a woman who is a slave, wow. Okay, we're gonna get into that conversation. We're gonna bypass that one. That one's an interesting that, one. That is actually an interesting one that I've been doing a lot of study on that. So, mm-hmm. but um, and then it talks about uh, when you come into the land, yeah, plant any food, and then yeah, it's talking it's about it's giving talks the rest about, and stuff. You're like not that. to eat anything with blood in it, right? Ooh, so no more medium raw steaks. Hey, hey, um, hey. Oh, here it is. Yeah, don't cut your hair at the sides or mar the edges of your beards. Um, and then the, that's the verse right before. Then right after that, it says you are not to make any gashes hey. for the de- for the dead. Or hey, for, tattoo for, marks. for all of our our Harry Potter fans out there, what what do you take of thirty one? Regard not them that have familiar spirits. Neither seek after wizards to defile uh, to be defiled by them. Uh, crap! There goes Gandalf too. So, Dang it, Gandalf! So when you're looking at it, you're like, okay, what do I do with all of this? Not just the one verse, but all of it. Right. Um, and that's when you can hit the commentaries and hit the other things and. One of the things that you can understand about that verse twenty, that verse twenty eight, is is that talking about don't just t- put tattoo marks on yourself. It says I am the Lord. After that, and a lot of people, and I agree with this too. It's talking about the actual pract- uh, practice of worshiping other gods, right? Based upon your body, because that's why it talked he- about in the in the very beginning. There, it talked well, it, even in that verse, though it said don't you know cut upon yourself for the dead, and then right. it says don't print upon your body. So it's all that same context of, of that verse right because there. Because it says, all in the I worship am the, the Lord. In right. other words, this is how I want you to worship because I am the Lord. Not right. those people, right. I am the Lord. Right. And so when I instantly look at this, I read, okay, now that brings up the question then of if I look at this and go, okay, so that's talking about don't put tattoos on yourself as a way to worship the dead and worship. So, and there's another God of of, of of Marduk? Was that the God back then that was in the land? That they, I can't remember what the name know. of the God was. All but, I know is that we can't watch Coco on Disney that, Plus anymore. There you go. But <laughs> that's how they worship gods back then. They would actually, it's almost like how uh, Mulan, and when right. you see Mulan, they're praying to the, the ancestors. Ancestral spirits. And so they would, right. not necessarily just the Chinese, but a lot of people would put tattoo marks on them to have, to carry their ancestors with them for right. good luck and for worship and for prayers and all these different things. Mm-hmm. And it was a signal of worship for that. So God said, yeah, don't put tattoo marks on yourself because that's a worship of this God, which that's a, I don't think part of the culture right now in that regards. But, you know, this is a verse that I think people actually do need to weigh. And and, yeah. and and maybe have that, okay, is this worthy of that conversation? And when I look at it, I instantly like read through that. And I'm like, okay, no, that tattoo is talking about worship of a false god. But all right, let's uh, let's move into the the New Testament because okay. you know in favor in favor of uh, of tattoos, I'm going to play both sides of the fence on this one. I'm going to play against and for. I'm well, gonna, let's do it. I'm going to be the the switch hitter. Switch hitter, but. Uh, you know, hey, that's that's Old Testament stuff, man. So a lot of those laws are done away with. That's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. We don't live in the Old Testament. New Testament doesn't say We're anything about law. it, does it? Let's find out. Well, let's let's find out. Let go. Um, First Corinthians six nineteen through twenty says, "Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So therefore, glorify God." With your body. Mm. Okay, so that's pretty clear right off the gate. Uh, I was trying to say bat and gate at the same time, but right <laughs> off the right out of right the out of the gate. <laughs> Great show tonight, guys. Great show tonight. I haven't had enough coffee. Nope. Um, but right off the bat, right out of the gate, it flat out says, you know, your body's not your own. You right. were bought with a price, so therefore glorify God with it. And again, we need to to look at the context of what's going on. What is the context kind of, of what's going so, on? Well, I was trying to decide how far back I wanted to go. Um, uh, I mean, I can tell you. Yeah, how far back do you want to go? Uh, I would say verse 12. You think so? Yeah. You think that far back? Mm-hmm. Now, you can start at 18. It's kind of the same stuff. <clears throat> All right, so everything is allowed for me, but not everything is advantageous. Advantageous. Beneficial. Yeah. Uh, everything is uh, allowed for me, but I will not be ruled by anything. Food is for the belly, and the belly is for food. But God will put an end to both this one and that one. Further, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. Indeed, the Lord is for the body. Now God indeed raised the Lord to life, and he will raise us to life by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? And It's curious, and I might point to that, but I might save it for another episode. Okay. But, okay. Uh, having... Taken then the members of Christ, shall I make them members of a prostitute? 
Mm, never. May it never happen. Or do you not know that the one joining himself to a prostitute is one body? Mm. Uh, because he says that uh, they will be the two into one body. Further, the one joined to the Lord is one spirit. Verse 18, avoid sexual immorality. Every sin, whatever a person does, is outside of the body. But the one committing sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit in you, whom you have from God, and you are not of yourself? Indeed, you were redeemed at a price. Then glorify God in your body. It's pretty That's interesting. That's pretty to, dang clear what this is talking about here. It's talking about sexual immorality. Right, in the fact of your body's not, you know, because... Back in the day, too, and even in today's culture, is the fact of it's just my body, so what's the purpose? Like in right. 1 Corinthians, my body, like, my choice. Well, more than just that, I mean, they're like, well, my soul's what goes on to eternity, not my body, so who cares what I do to it now or mm. right now? It doesn't really matter. It's like sex is sex. It pleases my body. It is what it is. And Paul's like, no, your body is precious before God, well, so don't you know destroy it. So if you really dig into the Tanakh, the Old Testament, and tie it in okay. with... Um, what's, the, what's the Tanakh? The Tanakh is the five books of Moses, the prophets, and the writings is what it's called. So that's like Ecclesiastes. It's, it's the Hebrew Psalms. version of our Old Testament. It, it, is, okay. it is the Old Testament, but it's called the Tanakh in Hebrew. It's the Old Testament. There you go. Different, different order of, of... Does Tanakh mean Testament? I believe so, yeah. Hence old and then new. Right. So... Um, no, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. That's okay. And the Tanakh, we look back at the Tanakh when you're um, talking about this. Passage. So yeah, we look back at the Tanakh when it comes to it, and when, when he's talking about sexual immorality here, it's in lieu of the ancient Hebrew wedding model, okay? And how when you get married, so Christ refers to the church as his at, bride, as his bride, right? And and it constantly makes reference to how, um, like I think of a woman should submit to her, her husband. And a husband should love her, his wife, as Christ loves the church. He's constantly making that that analogy, that right. parable, in that conversation, in always there. Yep. throughout his entire ministry. And there's a reason because we are the bride of Christ, which right. is why he comes back and get us, and we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb and eat Chick Fil A and eat Chick Fil A. See, it ties all back in together. Um, so because of that, when you prostitute yourself or sleep with a prostitute in the flesh. You are joining that one, those two spirits shall become one, those two bodies shall become one flesh. But also, this is another reference to, um, it's it's a fulfillment with greater fulfillment kind of thing. I like those. So it also refers to um, how we go to the quote-unquote whore of the world mm, as Christians. Okay. And we, we that's the prostitute is the world worldly things. And so if we as Christians go to that constantly, we are joining our soul with them and becoming one instead of becoming one with Christ. And that's why it goes into talking about how our body is part of Christ. Like we are right. one. And that's why that's why that whole context is in there. And this is saying that your body's like you're not worthless trash. Like you're not just, you know But do I think that it's referring to tattoos? No, I don't think so. Now, but could it be, though? Because, you know, this talks about, like, you know, your body's not your own. You were bought with a price, so glorify mm -hmm. God in your body. So, in other words, it's talking about glorify God in your body, so Correct. flee sexual immorality. Um, I think this also could go to other contexts, though, and other conversations. So, so, this is where it's like, well, what if you have a scar? I mean, now the temple's ruined. The temple's got a scratch on it. Now, I've got scars all over me from different cuts. Not cuts that I've done for myself, but now is the, the holy temple marred? I mean, how again, how far are people willing to take it? Right. Now, I do think it's interesting, though, that there's so many people who, when they when they look at this passage and they say, you're by the temple of the Holy Ghost, so don't get tattoos. But I'm like, but... And then the 300 pounds? And then, yeah. And then, the, you know, they, they deal with gluttony. They, or how about anger? Laziness or anger or... Um, Shoot, they mistreat their spouse. They mistreat yeah. someone else who is also a temple of the Holy Ghost. And... You know, so it's always one of those things where the, the main groups in the Christian circles that are about all against tattoos at the same time, they'll use this argument, but then it's kind of like, why are you looking at my spec when you got a plank in your eye there, boss? So, well, I mean, we could always refer back to the scripture in John that has been a, a story and a matter that has been debated amongst even the early 
church fathers. Oh, is this the woman caught in adultery? Yeah, and yeah, John, yeah. John, I think it was John. Was it six? I think it's six. John six. Yeah, because a lot of the most of the earliest manuscripts don't they, have they that have in there. Or, or the scribes put like um, under debate or something like that right, or a yep. line in there because there was a lot of people talking because fun funny fact. I'm not funny gonna, fact. <laughs> okay, funny fact. Um, most of the early church fathers were afraid that. Uh, if Jesus in that story, because he basically said he was without sin, cast the first stone, they were afraid that people would be like, go out and have an affair and be like, well, if you're without sin, have the first, cast first stone. So oh, that's why the early okay. church fathers do, did not, well, they were debating whether it should be in there or not. But it actually was in the manuscripts. Oh, okay. Of the original manuscripts. But it's still debated even to this day whether it should be in there or not. So just a little It's an interesting conversation. Funny facts. That. Like, you know, <laughs> so we, we talk about it and... This is the purpose of what Paul was trying to say here is the fact of, you know, honor God with your body. So I think this is the bigger conversation of how do we honor God with our body? This is specifically talking about how we control ourselves regarding sex and sexual immorality. But I think the biggest question is, is can we honor God with a tattoo? I think that's the raising the level of conversation, not saying it's a sin, but just because it's a, so I would argue that no, getting a tattoo is not a sin. But the question is, is can you honor God? You know, first Corinthians 10, 13, do all things to the glory of God. Can you honor God, give glory to God through getting a tattoo? I think that's so here's where I'm going to think that's the bigger question. Here's where I'm going to jump sides. So before I've been defending tattoos. Now I'm going to jump on the outside of it. Okay. I'm going to jump on the other side. See, this is where I'm saying I'm going to play both sides of hello the fence from, here. Hello from the other side. You're going to be Adele? Hello from the... Oh, sorry. going to be Adele? <sighs> Let's go. I can't hear that song without thinking of a certain I know, I know. I yep. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, Give it to me. Why? Why what? Why do you need to have a tattoo to glorify God? You don't. I mean, you don't need a tattoo to glorify God. So what's the purpose? Who, who is it? the tattoo actually for then? That's that's a question I think people need to ask. Is it a question that we can answer honestly here? I think that's a question that the person getting the tattoo <laughs> needs to do. Don't send me down a rabbit trail here. Don't red herring me. A- I'm not answer, red herring Answer you. me for our listeners. <laughs> I'll answer you from my perspective. All right, give All me right, your perspective. So, so we talked about it. I'm getting my tattoo. Um, for I'm trying to think when this, by the time this episode released, I might actually be getting it this weekend. Yeah, I if it's so. if it's releasing on the weekend, I'm thinking it's going to release, um, or if not, the following weekend. So my tattoo schedule, correct? My tattoo that I'm planning on getting is called the Cairo. It's yep. the first two letters of Jesus' name in Greek. It's the X and the P. Um, it's a very, very, very ancient Christian symbol. Um, in fact, many Christians back in the day had not necessarily this symbol, but a small symbol like on their forearm to signify that they were believers to other people. I thought that's kind of interesting, but um. So it's an early Christian symbol, um, and it's the first two letters of Jesus' name in Greek, which is, you know, kind of cool. It's an early Christian symbol. I love church history. Um, it even gets fun because, like, Emperor Constantine, for church history side and just history side, when he saw the, the cross in the sky, put the cross on all the men's shield, and then they won the battle. He's like, oh, I'll become a Christian because God's real. That's, the, that's literally the cross that he saw up in the sky was the Cairo. Um, and so on the inside of the Cairo, I want the alpha sign and the omega sign where it says Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega. That's what the tattoo is. So for me, it's a... Well, he's the Alaf and the Tav. <laughs> English, bro. It's the first right. letter and the last letter. Right, right. So Jesus is the be- first and the end, the beginning and the last. And right. so for me, it's the constant reminder of who Jesus is and the God that I'm following. And that when I see all the crap in the world, it's a reminder that Jesus is the first and the last and all the suffering I'm dealing with in this world just for lack of a better word, pale in comparison to what's to come. But it's also a conversation starter, too. Um, there's actually, I thought this was a super cool quote when I was doing some reading from a, a, a lady by the name of Jan Walker. She was a blogger for New Spring Church. She said, people would never ask me about my faith, but they'll ask me about my tattoo. And so she had a certain tattoo that she was part of her story, her battle of anorexia. She would just have two lines on her right wrist, and it was a reminder of, you know, recovery comes three meals at a time. And that's actually apparently a symbol for anorexia or something mm, like that. I, I don't that. know. So people go, what's that? And then she would say, I'd battle the anorexia, but Jesus saved me from it. Mm. Um, and so I actually almost had a conversation about my tattoo, just talking to someone about what the tattoo is going to be. And then they had to leave before I could 
drop the full gospel story. It's kind of sad. Dang it. And that's what I said to him. Like, dang it, Satan. But, um, Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> but, you know, it's a conversation started too. I go, oh, because I've actually have brought people to church because of their tattoos. I've had wonderful gospel mm. conversations with people. Just mm. like, hey, tell me the story of that. And, you know, normally it's like, oh, it reminds me of my mom or I travel or whatever. It's a, it's a, tattoos are normally a piece, a symbol of who you are, like you with your, your heritage. Right. Well, this is, this is my heritage. And if I tell people, oh, this is a symbol, it's an early Christian symbol for, for that fact that Jesus Christ is the Alpha Omega. Have, have you heard of Jesus before? Let go. Like we're now, we're in the gospel conversation. And in fact, this was interesting. I actually, um, I don't think most people know this, but I actually asked our lead pastor if he was okay with me getting a tattoo. Mm -hmm. And at first he was like, no, I, I, you know, there's people in the church who might not like it. And I'm like, well, do you, do you mind if I tell you what it is and why I want it? And after I told him why I want it, he's like, maybe I'll get one. Well, oh, no, he's <laughs> like, that's actually pretty cool. The fact that you're using your body as an evangelism piece. I'm like now, and he even was like, now that, that can bring glory to God. And I'm like, dang straight. So can I get it? And he goes, well, that's up to you. <laughs> Which means you're while you're employed, no, but after no, that, that it's was fine. that was a you're gonna take some hits, you're gonna take some heat, so be willing to, to take the heat and, and you the still hits will. for it. And I still will, but I don't but what's funny though is all of my teens have known I've wanted this one for years. In fact, right. I tell all my teens who want tattoos, because every teenager has a tattoo they want to get. I always tell them they can tell you if they're listening, have that same tattoo either draw it out or have gonna, it in your head. I'm going to ask one of your former teams. Ask teams them. They'll tell you either. Some week. of them might get the year messed up. That's um, all right. But I always say, keep it in your pocket for like three years. If you still like it after three years, go get it. Some people might say two years. Cause I've said two years one time. Cause they were older. They were like already 18. I'm like, I do two years. Um, but I struggle with, okay, so I'm getting my tattoo for this purpose. Does it cross into the Levitical line of don't mark your body for the dead of mm. when people get tattoos for of for their dead father their dead grandma their dead grandfather mm. a this is so i can remember my whatever family member or best friend or the portrait on the tattoo i'm like is that is that actually crossing into the sin now because you're doing it to remember the dead and yeah, but I don't think your that, body. I don't think that, that's the worship you know? of the dead. I think there's a difference between worshiping and remembering. Right. I mean, I have a picture of my dad, and he's dead, and I have right. a picture of him up over in my office. Right. So, is there any difference between that and maybe getting like something of remember my dad on my body physically? I don't right. know. Like yeah. that's where that's actually where I wrestle with. I don't know what to do with that. Do part. not mourn for the dead because the dead will never know. What, what what's that? I don't know. Is that just fuller? Just, so I'm like that was that was like I thought that was some scripture right there. That's some fullerism. But we do see you know don't but, the God's and the God's not the God of the dead, but God's the God of the living. Right. But you know we see the, that. What I mean by what I just said though is that is that the dead will never know if you're mourning for them. They just won't because if they're a Christian, they don't care, and if they're not a Christian. They probably still don't care. Right. <laughs> at but this does, point that, in time. does that matter, though? Because, like, you know, but it's normally when people do a tattoo, it's so that they can remember their grandma or their yeah, grandpa. Right. Right. And I get that. Like I, I've had teens who have gotten, well, they're college kids now. They've gotten tattoos of, like, um, a love you always sign gramps I've, in that handwriting. Like, I've got, under, fa yeah, I've got family members, you know, that have stuff for, for family members that have passed away. So I guess but what I'm wondering is, does that cross the line? It, it may. Um, but I want to go back to, playing devil's advocate do it for what you do were just it let's saying. go and <laughs> just because you're giggling i'm nervous bro just because i'm well i'm just i'm My foot's twitching i'm a tatted up guy and so it's funny that a tatted up guy <laughs> is gonna play the other it's kind of ironic isn't it <laughs> it's like the old one where it's like here's my tattoo to show yeah. i have a past yeah here look see i have a past right here um no i, I I'm not giving my opinion whether I'm for or against yet. Oh, okay. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Because right, you haven't told us if you're for it, because it's been a long time since uh, you've gotten six one. Six years since yeah. I've had one. So so playing 20, devil's... 28. So, so playing devil's advocate to everything you just said. That's okay. all I'm okay. doing. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so there's not a need for having the tattoo. No. There's not a need. No. Other than you want the tattoo. Right. So is that self-minded rather than kingdom-minded? Even though you're saying you're doing it for the kingdom, is it something that you really just want for you? So you can say it's for the kingdom? This is I'm just playing devil's advocate. I don't know. I it's never really thought about that. It's a question I struggle with. Right. It's a, it's a very big question that I, my, I myself struggle with personally. Of If I got another tattoo, is it really? Because I'm the same way. I'm like, man, it would be so cool to have 
Matthew five sixteen in like that's he- your verse. That's in, your in verse. Hebrew on my forearm. Right. And then people be like, oh, what's that? And then I can say, this is what it is. Mm-hmm. And, and just give them the gospel message. Or even having, you know, gospel verses on, on my body as, as for the same reason you said, as a, as a conversation piece. But then I struggle with myself and I go, is it really for me or, or is it really for God? Is it something I want because I, I like it. it? It's the culture and I think it looks good and it's really for me. Or is it something that like, can I do, can I do ministry can i witness can i have the gospel conversation with people without that because if it's not necessary then why do it but can you do that with everything your iphone your coffee like you don't need coffee you don't need an iphone we don't need this equipment we don't but i'm not i'm not saying i'm getting this for the furtherance of the kingdom right like that's where i'm i'm struggling with Saying, "Oh, well, I'm getting this for the kingdom, but is it really for the kingdom?" Because, like, I'm not saying I'm getting making coffee for the kingdom, right? You're making it for you. I'm making it for me. I'm thirsty mm-hmm. and I like coffee. I'm right. not having a phone. I'm having it for the kingdom. It's for me. It's for be able to keep in contact, do research, stuff like that. And I don't think it's wrong to for, to say this tattoo is for me. I actually don't think that's wrong. Well, I, I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm dealing with the the kingdom aspect right now. Right. So it's just I'm sharing with you. It's a it's a question that I struggle with internally. Right. And I don't know what the right answer is. You know, I saw a meme the other day where it's like, if I get a tattoo, I'll, what, what, what is it like? Um, not influence. That's not the right word where it's like, oh, if I get a tattoo, I'll lose opportunities. But if I get a tattoo, I'll gain opportunities. Mm. And I'm like, it's very true. Oh, that's interesting. It's, it's really interesting. But at the but end, you can of, have the same opportunities without it too. Oh, and, and I agree with that, but I'm, because but I, I can, think that makes it right or wrong. I can still walk up to somebody and go, Hey, nice tattoo. You got there. What's it mean? And start a conversation piece on somebody else's tattoo. Rather than my own. Rather than my own. Right. So I'm focused on them rather than focused on me. Um, again, this is just my my own struggle in my mind with what I deal with of getting. Because I, I want more tattoos, but are they right? I don't. I mean, it's the question I'm struggling with. Um, for the longest time, I would say I would have given the exact answer you just gave. Hey, I'm, it's a conversational piece. It's an icebreaker. And you and I have talked about this and we've agreed on this. And it's only been recently, it's like, do I really, is it really for the gospel? Is it really for the kingdom or is it for me? And if it's just for me, is it really necessary? I don't know, but I think you can take that conversation and, and honestly explode that into so many other avenues. You I mean, because we're supposed to live peacefully and humbly and all these different things. You can. And, you know, I don't play people who don't have tattoos. But, I don't play people who do have tattoos. But I guess from my side, looking out at them, I'm like, does it even matter? I mean, it's the same. I mean, but I guess we it, didn't have the same question with people dyeing their hair, the right. different colors yep. or different styles of haircuts. Right. And it, honestly, it, if you're like, oh, it doesn't matter about so, the kingdom, you can walk so around here's, smelling like a bum. Here's here's the big thing. Is, is it going to draw attention to you and not to God? Or is it going to take away from attention from God? So what I mean by that is like if I dye my hair pink right now, is it going to draw away attention to me or to God? If I if I dress in a, my Sunday's best, a suit, clean shaved, and walk around town, is that going to draw attention to me or to God? I mean, so I'm saying the fundies I think have it wrong too in that aspect, in that exploded view of all these things. Right. We're not supposed to be like the world, but we're supposed to be in the world. We've had this conversation, and you become a a, a Roman to win a Roman type of thing. Right. Um, in the culture we're lived in now. Not every, only 20% of the people have tattoos, so it's not a cultural thing. You don't have to have one. But likewise, there's 20% of the population out there that have them. So you could make an argument for it. Right. And, and I don't think, do I think it's a sin? I don't think it's a sin unless it takes away from God. That's where it could be a sin. And, and it's the same thing with bodybuilding, working out. It's the same thing with dressing nice or dressing sloppy. It's just, I could grow my beard this long and style it. I could be drawing. I mean, it's the same thing. Everything that we we do as Christians is supposed to be glorifying God. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and, and glorify, glorify your, your Father, Father in, in heaven. heaven. So it's not about you. It's about him. Right. It's about reflecting that light. Jesus is the light of the world. Well, I don't think a tattoo reflecting. draws attention to me or or draws that people away so, from God either. So the question I always get is it's not like I'm getting a teardrop. In man, my face. man, that's a nice tattoo. Where'd you get it? Where'd you get it? It's like, oh so th- again, this is what I'm struggling with. I don't necessarily think it's a, a, a bad thing to have one. 
but to say it's for ministry, I, I, I don't know. I and don't I'm not know. saying I'm getting it for the sole purpose of evangelism. And I, again, you know? I'm, I'm with you. I, it's, I, it's an internal struggle within me. I, ha- I don't have the answer to that. Right. I don't have the answer to that. And I guess my answer for, you know, well, my body is a temple. I'm like, I always make the joke of like, well, we, we, we paint the temple. And last time I checked, when, yeah. when God created the temple, it was the most beautiful building in all of Jerusalem. Well, I always, I always you know? used to say when people bring stuff up like that in my adult life, I would always be like, well, you know, Jesus made the flowers in the field different colors because he's an artist. And right. this is artwork on his temple. And so, like, <laughs> like that's true. I, and that's the way I would always refute it. But is that the correct way to do it? Is it is it to compare? Is that the right thing to do? I I'm not sure. Right, because it's what's I'm the not motive sure, behind it. I'm not sure to twist scripture to make me feel better about what my choices are. I don't think that's the right way. That's what the Pharisees did. They always right. twisted scripture, and so I don't think that's the right attitude to have. I think the right attitude to have, if you're going to have a tattoo, is to just one be honest. Like, yeah, this is for me. This is something I like. Um. And no, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm not going to sit here and make this big thing. And and you have to be willing to be okay if people go, well, I think that's a sin. Well, okay. Well, Thank you for yep, your opinion. Yep. Okay. Oh, nope. Uh, Here, here's I'm sorry. A, here's a jar for all the yep. other people's opinions. Too. Thank you. I'm sorry that uh, I caused you to become angry or anything. Like, There's nothing I can do about it now. Yeah. I don't think the weaker brother in conversation comes into this one. No. I, I, I'm not saying that the weaker no, I'm, brother. I'm just saying in general. I'm right. Just, I'm just saying that terms. If, you just kind of take their opinion. You don't have to backlash. You don't have to say anything back. You just take their opinion. Live by your conviction. Right. I always say that. Live by your convictions. If God has shown you truth, you better live by it because he expects you to abide by the truth that he's given to you. But if he hasn't said this is a sin and you don't see it in scripture, which I don't see from the two scriptures that we brought up tonight, that it talks directly about that, in my opinion, in the context of the, of the scripture, um, I think it's Okay. I th- that's my opinion. So, so here's a, a a quote. I wasn't planning on reading this. It's from gotquestions.org. dot Got questions. They're not a sponsor They're yet. Not. Yet. <laughs> Got questions. Um, but you know, on the basic question of are tattoos a sin, the the author um, Michael Howdman, his last paragraph says, "I seriously doubt." I, now, I will say this: he had a he he did a really great job with the article. Um, and this is his closing thoughts. These are not mine. These are his. Um, I seriously doubt I will ever get a tattoo. I'm just not convinced that it is right to permanently mark my body with a tattoo. Speaking of Christian freedom, 1 Corinthians 6, 12 states that everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Mm. Also, 1 Corinthians 10, 23. That's a good one. Might tattoos be permissible? Maybe. But I am not fully convinced they are beneficial for me. For me, then, it would be a sin to get a tattoo because there is doubt, not faith. Right. So he says that is it is he said everything's permissible, but it's not beneficial. He, but then he said, I think this is the key phrase that we have to focus on is he says for me for right, me it's right. not beneficial Con- follow your convictions follow your convictions now honestly will i ever look back in 50 years 40 years and regret the tattoo maybe, maybe. i know i regret this my, the tigers one i regret because, because it was out of because it's tigers it, well no it was no <laughs> i love the tigers it was because it was out of rebellion mm-hmm. that's why i regret it gotcha and see, my not, i mean that's the thing it's like you know if if there's teenagers listening out there and your parents say as long as you're in my house you got to abide by my rules. And you sure answer, as heck do. You sure do, because Ephesians 6 flat out says, obey your parents. It doesn't say, if you're under the age of 14, obey your parents. It's just right. children, obey your parents and the Lord. And my mom's rule was, and when long as you live here, I don't want you to get tattooed. And all, all of us hide kids said, okay. Yeah. That's 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 cool. And that's a conversation for another day. That's, that's a com- that, That's a good, we always say about that. How, yeah, that we, we have a lot of these. But, but at um, what, what point can you make your own decisions? Right, exactly. So I'm, I'm not in my mom's house anymore. So right. that's check um you know it's the fact of everything's permission but not everything is beneficial right and that's you got to decide that for yourself. right and for me i i've looked at this i mean i've had the same tattoo idea in my head for over five years now right and i i've chosen to love those under my care as a pastor and say you know what this is not like everything's permissible but it's not always beneficial so i took that step yep it hasn't been beneficial right and but now i'm looking at my position and where i am in life and all these different things and i'm like yeah let's do it Right. Let's go for it. So, and that's the personal conviction that I've had for myself. There you go. So that's that's my closing thoughts, dude. Can't that's it. S- can't say it any better than that, man. I because think, I uh, said it. I think that's that. No, that's great. Oh, Live kidding. by your convictions. Um, if if the Lord hasn't said anything to you about it, then go for it. Any other closing thoughts from you, my dude? I don't have any, my bro. Dude, that was a good conversation, that bro. Was. But now, you ready? I'm ready. Time for. Fun facts with Fillmore. <laughs>
<laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> I played that like four times I today. I love it. Dude, bro, what fun fact you got for us tonight, the bro? Fun fact, to make this conversation relieve a little tension. Okay, the fun fact of the day is, did you know, Mark and listeners, an apple, potato, and onion all taste the same if you eat them with your nose plugged? No, wait, what? An apple, potato, and onion all taste the same if you eat them with your nose plugged. Okay. Our sense of taste is 80% made up of our sense of smell. If you were to blindfold yourself and plug your nose, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these three foods. You know what I think we need to do? Try this. We need to do this on camera for the people. We need to get Soche in here, and and we'll do it to Soche. Because if we can't Ooh, taste it, I don't want to be. Actually, like, that would be fun next. Or or if we get another guest in studio, uh, say hey, welcome to the podcast. Put blindfold blindfold test. Let's go, and we gotta make sure they plug their nose like hundred percent. Oh, of course. Like shove it with some wads of paper towel yeah. or something and then like the, the old uh the old hair, the, clo- pin the clothes thing. pins yeah yeah Heck that's yeah. what's up dude i love it but bro thanks for today's conversation man no problem and if you're listening out there still if we haven't lost it yet we well, love you we call you rtc family for a reason because we really feel like you're a family but reach out to us let's continue the conversation on facebook instagram over at twitter if you want to hit us up there too at the email address real talk christian podcast at gmail.com the website, realtalkchristianpodcast.com. And you can uh, click. There's a little button that says you can call us, and that actually lets you call our phone number. Oh, so I don't yeah. even remember it, but it's 574. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Two. Nope. Three. Nope. It's it's four something, four two at the end, right? All right. <laughs> I botched it. What's our phone number, boss? <laughs> Five seven four five seven four four zero zero five three five two. I wasn't even in the ballpark. Five seven four. Four zero zero five three five two, and they can call us or text us at that number, or leave a voicemail. And if you leave a voicemail with a question, we can put your voice on the show. Oh yeah, I love it. Well, hey, make sure you leave us an Apple review if you can. If not, we still love you anyways. You might just not, you know, sit by us while we eat our Chick Fil A at the at the last supper. I'm dunking. Piece of the lamb. I'm dunking. I absolutely love it, man. But hey, Fuller, it was fun. As but until next time, buddy, take it easy. <laughs>